Hi, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. Right, since I'm surrounded by puzzles here, you can probably guess that I have a puzzle haul for you today and there's plenty for me to show you. So I'm just going to dive right in and I'm going to start with this pile here at the front. Uh, if I can pull it towards me. <clears throat> so, so, just taking the top one, first we have a puzzle that is called Harry Potter Diagon Alley Shop Signs. And this is, it's a thousand pieces in total, but it's actually five 200 piece puzzles. So it's individual shop signs. We've got, I can't actually see what that one is because it's too dark. That's for the Daily Profit. Then we've got Ollivander's. Then we've got, now then what does that one say? Can't read it, need my glasses. Uh, we've got the Leaky Cauldron. Oh, they're a little bit bigger on the back. Okay, I see it now. The font's actually quite hard to make out, but with the green one is Weasley's Wizard Weezers. So that's the joke shop that's run by the Weasley Brothers. And then the other one is um, Gringotts Bank. So it's five shop signs. It looks like a really fun puzzle. I do love Harry Potter. And this was a gift, actually. I have a friend that uh, fairly recently went to Florida and he was at the Universal Park and he um, got this puzzle from there and sent it to me. It was kind of part of a wee birthday um, parcel that I got in September, and he knows I love Harry Potter, so I was really chuffed to get this, so thank you so much. And I'm looking, in fact, I've, I've actually already started these puzzles, but I, I'm only at sorting at the moment, because they're all jumbled together, all the pieces. They're, they were in a bag, but they weren't in separate bags, so you have to kind of separate out the different individual puzzles really so i'm still in the sorting process on it but it looks like it's going to be really good fun so that is that one. Oh, uh, by the way this one is made by the noble collection that's the brand right the next one we have an elena essex puzzle now it's another christmas puzzle or well perhaps a winter puzzle might be a little bit more specific. This is part of her new winter collection that she's brought out. And I saw pictures of those on Instagram recently and I really fell in love with this image. This is called Winter Spirit and it's full of bright colors like pretty much all of Elena Essex's puzzles. And what we've got here is a scene, there's sort of hills. It looks like there's a sea in the background with some dolphins splashing in the waves. We've got some stars and a moon. And then there's a gorgeous owl and a deer and an Arctic fox. We've got a walrus here at the front and there's a polar bear. And it just looks really lovely. Now, I actually did for my Christmas puzzle last year an Elena Essex puzzle as well. That was called Christmas Cornucopia. And I enjoyed that so much that when I saw this, I thought, yeah, I'm going to get another one and I'll do this one um, sometime this month. So look out for that. We've then got another thousand piece puzzle. This one is was gifted to me by one of my subscribers and she got in touch with me by email and she thought I would enjoy this puzzle. She'd done it herself and she thought I would enjoy it. The brand is WH Smith, which is actually shops in the UK, stationers, stationery shop. And there's there's a whole bunch of them in the UK. I've got one up here in Stirling as well. So I can get hold of WH Smith puzzles, but I, I haven't actually ever done one before. So I'm intrigued to have a go at this one and see what WH Smith puzzles are like. But this one is called Around the World and it's by Lars Stewart. And basically the image is jigsaw pieces all connected together, but it's not one big picture that's made. It's lots of little pictures inside the jigsaw pieces, all related to travel and aspects of things around the world. So I'm looking forward to that. So thank you so much for sending me that. I really do appreciate that. So my last puzzle in this little pile is this one here. Now then, I'm excited to have a go at this one because it's another brand I haven't done before. It's a Springbok puzzle. And I don't see many Springbok puzzles here in the UK. I have stumbled across a couple in a charity shop. This was also a charity shop find. The one I found before, I actually bought it, but I wasn't over enamored with the image. So I ended up sending that back to the charity shop. It was a 1,000 500 piece puzzle of Chicago at night 
Um, but then when I found this one, I much preferred the image and it looks really fun. It also looks challenging. It's called Pixel Perfect and it's from 1989. And it's kind of like a picture of balloons floating in the sky. It's kind of pixelated. There's clouds and there's like a gradient of blue and pink in the sky where there's like a sunset. But then it's kind of layered. The image is layered and it's sort of rotated as it gets deeper in. So it looks, it's got like a little tunnel effect to it. And as I say, it does look quite difficult, but there is color to go on. We've got these lines that I can maybe use to try and build the puzzle. But another aspect of it that I'm really looking forward to is that this puzzle is a random cut puzzle and I haven't done many random cut puzzles full stop, let alone on the channel. So I opened up the box because I was really intrigued to see the pieces and I just, I'm staggered by how chunky these pieces are. They are so thick and sturdy. Really, really good chunky pieces. And they are indeed random cut. And so they're kind of weird and wonderful shapes, but they're nice and big as well. And the image is, it's quite shiny. The finish on the piece so I'm hoping that's not going to be too big of an issue under my lights but I'm really looking forward to putting this together I think it's going to be challenging but I think it's going to be fun as well so this will be my first springbok puzzle and one from the 80s no less so that's going to be good I do hope it's complete I have no reason to think that it isn't it was taped down the lid it doesn't say anything about being incomplete although that doesn't necessarily mean much but we shall see we shall see so i'm looking forward to doing that one uh, the next one i'm going to show you is this one over here it's kind of hidden away to the side this one is one i've already started and the reason for that is because it is an advent calendar puzzle it's a big chunky box what you have is you have 12 doors on this side and then you turn it round and there are 12 doors on this side. It comes in a little sleeve you slide the box out. And it's called Christmas Adventure and it's by Gibsons. So this advent calendar is not one large puzzle that you slowly put together and you have the complete image at the end. This is 24 mini puzzles, all with a Christmas theme, obviously. Now we're on the... 13th of December today. I haven't actually done today's yet, but I've done the other 12. And what I've been doing with this puzzle is I've been putting up daily videos, short videos on building these puzzles day to day. And I've been putting those up in my members area and also on my Patreon. So if you want to see these puzzles being put together just kind of on a daily basis, opening up the door and a wee time lapse of them going together, pictures of them at the end, then you can go and have a look at those if you fancy some extra content on there. But what I'm also doing is I'm doing videos of on, on the main channel of roughly six of the puzzles at once. So I've already brought out a video where I've done one to six and I've recently finished seven to 12 and I'm working on the video for that as well. So you can still see them on the main channel, but if you're interested in a day-to-day -day kind of update on this one then you can go over there and have a wee look at my members area but it's really fun the puzzles are really cute they're all shaped and the shapes repeat after six days so which I didn't realize until I got to day seven so I think it's like a star and a, and a gingerbread man and a present there's a stocking and a bauble and another star I think but and then the shapes repeat when you get to seven and so on and so forth so yeah so this one has been really good fun next i will show you this pile over here in the corner just gonna move these to the side a wee bit uh these ones are in a separate pile because they're sort of within a certain category and that category would be speed puzzling so all of these are puzzles that were used in the 2023 World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship competition that was in Spain just in September there. It is a competition that I was at, my very first speed puzzling competition, in case you didn't know that already. So I managed to get hold of some more of the puzzles that were done there that I didn't do when I was there. And I also wasn't able to bring back with me because I just ran out of space in my uh, case. So I'll go through those with you just now. 
So the first one on the top is this 500 piece puzzle. It's called Student Days and it's one of the puzzles that was used in the preliminary rounds of the pairs category. I think this was group A. I was in group C with Juby and Donna Louise and Jeanette were in group B so neither of us uh, got this puzzle but I, I really like the image. It's really colourful. I love the box too, all the purples and everything but it's it's a nice image and I just really fancied having a go at it so I probably will time myself but even though I'm doing it on my own and this was a pairs puzzle I think probably it will take me a little longer than if I had done it with Juby but I'm really looking forward to it and, and just see how I get on under the timed conditions. So I will have a go at that one. There's another two 500 piece puzzles, both nature edition puzzles, and they were both used in the individual rounds at the championship. So the first one is this one. This one's called Lupins, and this was used in group A, which was Donna Louise's group. And I, I think it's sort of widely regarded as the most difficult of the puzzles that came up in the individual preliminary rounds. It is a tough image and I, I, I think a f quite a few people didn't finish it, but it is a very pretty image. I do like it. And I was just curious to know how I would have got on if I'd have had a go at this puzzle, if I would have finished it within the time limit. So I'm just curious to have a go at it and see how I would have done on that one. And then the last one from the 500 piece selection is this one, as I said, another nature edition. This one's called Summer Thunderstorm and it's the panorama puzzle that came up in the individual preliminaries so it, it was i actually it was for group f and i actually commentated on that round and so we were all surprised when a panorama came up it was like the first one in the competition that did um there were more later on but uh, this was the first and it's actually it it i've not done it but it it turned out to be a little easier than I initially thought it would be. I think that's partially to do with the shape of it. So these big, you know, they're like this big block of grass at the bottom, for example, wasn't as chunky a section as I thought. It was only about three rows of puzzle, I think, in the end. So the, and the sky looks a bit daunting, but you do have this gradient running through it. You've also got that lightning bolt adding a little bit of detail there as well. So. I'll see how I get on and how I would have stacked up on the leaderboard on that one. So quite looking forward to that. And then the last one I'm really excited about, I was pleased to get hold of this because this is one of the finals puzzles. Those puzzles are were all already released at the Worlds. I could have um, I could have bought them up from Amazon, and I was actually intending to buy them from Amazon. I did buy Student Days, uh, but the other two and this one were actually sent to me by Alfonso from Spain. So I was really really appreciative to him that he did that for me. He must have had a few spares, and he sent them through to me. But I'm especially happy about this one because I wouldn't have been able to get hold of this one. I would have had to have waited until it was actually released to the general public. Um, but it's not yet and that's because it's one of the finals puzzles so this was the pairs final puzzle so Juby and I attempted this and we didn't finish it among many others who didn't finish it it was a really tough puzzle to speed run and uh, we got past halfway I think I can't remember how many pieces we had left but it was it, it was tough to speed run but I actually really like the image and I quite enjoyed it and it was nice puzzling with Juby. Juby took our copy and um, she really liked it as well and I just didn't have space for any more puzzles as I said so I, I, I didn't take it with me but I have it now and I really am looking forward to having a go at this. I think I'm just going to do this at a leisurely pace. I may or may not time myself, I don't know yet but really what I want is to just enjoy this puzzle and I actually thought that I would maybe build this puzzle over on my members area and in Patreon for the bonus monthly videos that I do for the higher tier. I'm thinking I might do that actually for my December video so it'll be very soon and if you are interested in seeing that then you can have a look at my members area on that. There's links in the description for those. So yes, oh it's called Boston by the way, it's a thousand pieces and it the artwork's by Jack Otanio and it's it's obviously meant to be buildings but it's very abstract it's very colorful lots of blocks of color and patterns so that's really because it's so busy in color and patterns I think that's really one of the things that made it quite a hard puzzle to do but 
I'm eager for the challenge of having a go at that one again. Okay, next I will show you these here. Now, this is a little collection of puzzles that I never expected to have. They're wooden puzzles, all by the same brand. The brand is called La Munda, and I've never heard of that brand before. It's a small company, I believe, in based in Spain. And I actually brought one of the puzzles back with me from Spain. It was gifted to me by Alfonso. And these were actually surprise puzzles in my wee box of puzzles that he sent me from Spain. I knew I was getting those, but I did not know these were going to come. So I, I'm actually, I'm really looking forward to these. I do like wooden puzzles. I've been doing a lot more of them recently. This one I have the box lid for, and um, so I've got an image, but I had to flatten the box because, as I say, it was one I had to put in my case on the way home from Spain. So this one is 257 pieces and it's called The Railway. The image is by Edward Manet, 1956, and it's a lady who's read, holding a book and there's a wee girl beside her, and it's a really nice image. And the pieces are, they're in a little bag and they come in a plastic bag, although I've since got rid of the plastic bag. Um, but just to show you a photo of some of these pieces, this one doesn't have any whimsies, but the pieces are all crazy shapes, all wiggly jiggly, and it's rectangular, so we've got some obvious parts where it's an edge piece, you can tell it's, it's there's a straight line on it, so you can tell what the edge pieces are. But we don't have any whimsies in this puzzle, but the pieces look to be really nice, nice and thick, and the surface on these pieces is quite smooth. I've been quite used to a, a sort of a roughness on the surface of wooden puzzles, but these are really quite smooth and soft and the colour quality, the image quality looks to be really nice as well. So I'm really looking forward to trying these puzzles. But I had a wee peek at the pieces in the other puzzles and they're actually, you know, they're not uniform in their shape. So this one here, for example, is 260 pieces. The image on this is called Nearing the Issue at the Cockpit. It's by Horace Bonham and it says 1879. And actually the pieces in this one are all the same shape, apart from the edges. The edges have an obvious kind of cut off. There's a line where the border is, but all the internal pieces are the same shape and they're shaped, they're like little lizards. <laughs> so that's interesting because it's, you know, I was expecting them to just all be these wiggly shapes, but they're not. They're, you get something a little bit different. So that's that one. And then the last one, it's in a slightly different shape box, flatter and wider. And this one is called Whistle Dog. I really love the image on this. It's really, really nice. It's a different kind of artwork to that one. And the artist is, now I'm likely to pronounce this wrong, so do accept my apologies if I really butcher it, but it says, Merke Albio Vega. So there's a wee girl standing there and she's got two little tiny dogs on leads on either side of her and there's some flowers around the edge and it actually says whistle dog um, in the image as well around either side of her face. So I'm really looking forward to that but again the thing I liked about this one is all different shaped pieces, a bit more random like the first one, but this one actually does have whimsies. So I was really pleased to see that. It's got tiny little doggies and I think there's a wee cat and there's all different whimsies in there. And I think, oh, I think I spotted the logo as well. There was a whimsy sh shape of the logo. The logo is actually a, it's like a, an infinity symbol. It's like a sideways figure of eight. You can see it there and it makes up the two O's in the name La Munda as well. So I'm really looking forward to doing those. I'm quite intrigued. I, um, I'd never seen those before I'd been to Spain. So that's going to be a really good, uh, a good video because I, I do believe I will do a video on those. So now I am moving on to this pile here. We're moving into the larger piece counts now. And the top puzzle on this little pile is a Ravensburger puzzle. Now this is, it's kind of a Christmas gift. I knew I was going to be getting a little bit of, of cash for Christmas. And so I thought, well, 
I'll have a look in the Black Friday sales and see if I can find any uh, good sales. And I did find one on this one. It's called Big City Collage. It's a 5,000 piece and it's basically monuments and landmarks from different cities around the world. So you've got the Eiffel Tower there, you've got the Statue of Liberty, you've got a Sphinx, you've got the Taj Mahal. There's all kinds of buildings there all kind of layered on top of each other. And then in the sky, which is this, like a lovely light blue colour, you've got details like there's like a tree with flowers, there's birds, but you've also got like postage stamps and things like that. So it's kind of like got a postcard kind of feel to it. And it puts me a lot in mind of the New York postcard and the London postcard in that respect, we 500 piece puzzles because they've got these sort of similar features in the image. With this one, I don't know, I was just drawn to the image. It was one of those puzzles that I've seen a few times and every time I saw it, I thought, I quite like that. Uh, and then I would sort of just forget about it and move on and then I'd see it again and I'd be like, yeah, I really do like that. And then just every time I saw it, I'd, I kind of liked it even more. So I decided to go for it. I don't normally do puzzles with buildings in, but ever since I did the 360 world puzzle by Puzzle Anatolian, the 3000 piece puzzle that I did, that's full of um, world landmarks as well. And I just enjoyed that so much. I thought, yeah, I think I'm gonna enjoy this one as well. So this was a wee Christmas gift to myself that I got in the Black Friday sale. So I'm now going to move on to, I'm gonna just actually put this one on the floor. <laughs> because I am running out of space. Now I'm gonna move on to these two puzzles here. Now these are both Educa puzzles and they are both the same piece count, 4,000 pieces. Never done a 4,000 piece Educa. The only 4,000 piece puzzle I've done actually, I think is a Bluebird puzzle, the circus puzzle that I did. So this one's called Japanese Collage and this was another puzzle gift that I got. Christmas gift, again, early Christmas gift. I'm getting all these early Christmas puzzles. And what this is, is it's basically, it's kind of like four stained glass windows. They're sort of arched up like that. And in each window, there is a Japanese lady and they're all wearing these gorgeous silk kimonos with the lovely colors. There's flowers all around them. Each one has kind of a different colour behind it, so you've got a lovely vivid purple there. That one's more green and this one's more of an orange colour. Uh, but it's a gorgeous image and I'm really looking forward to building this. I think it's going to be a really nice fun puzzle to build. And the other 4000 piece educator I have here is, if I can just swap these over, is called I think it's called Savannah Coming to Life. Sav yeah, Savannah Coming to Life. So this one puts me in mind of the Entering the Bedroom puzzle, also by Educa. That one is 6,000 pieces and I've done that one on the channel and I loved that puzzle. I do like animal puzzles, as you probably guess by the giant wildlife puzzle I've been doing. This is similar to that in the sense that instead of being a doorway into a bedroom, this one is a picture frame and the savannah is literally coming out of the frame into whatever room it happens to be in so you've got some of the landscape in front of the picture here a little bit of a waterfall coming down over the front of the frame you've got the giraffes are out and wandering about this one's kind of halfway out you've got zebra just standing at the front there kind of grazing you've got an elephant in there there are still some animals in the picture but the whole thing is just kind of being overtaken by this savannah scene with all the animals and it's just it's really lovely and uh, the colors i really like the colors this this grass at the bottom is a really nice vivid green and this blue water and i think it's going to be a nice puzzle to be able to sort into lots of different areas and put together i think it's going to be really really enjoyable so this again another gift this was a birthday gift it came in the same box as my harry potter uh, shop sign puzzles so yeah a lot of puzzle gifts in this haul so I'm really really looking forward to doing that one as well and my last puzzle I believe I don't think I've missed any in this haul is this one here this is the biggest one in the haul and it's one that I never expected to get at least anytime soon 
It's by Treffle and it's one of Treffle's large piece count puzzles and I, I have been aware of them. They do 9,000 piece ones and they've got some 13,500 piece ones I believe. This is a 9,000 piece and it's called The Greatest Disney Collection. So I'll show you the top there but I'll also take a picture of the poster. There's a poster inside here so you can see the image a little bit better and it's a collage so it puts me in mind a little bit of the Disney Museum in the sense that it's all framed pictures with different characters in them um, but it's different in the sense that they're sort of popping out of the pictures and there's also writing on here as well but it looks like a fun one. Disney Puzzles are always fun in my experience. I think I'm going to enjoy this. But the reason I wasn't expecting to get it was because it was offered to me by one of my subscribers, a lady called Lisa, who actually is, she lives in the UK. So she thought I might be interested in building this puzzle. She'd done it herself and she offered it to me for a very, very, very reasonable price. One that I couldn't really pass up. So I bought it from her with my sincerest thanks thank you so much for sending it to me it looks brilliant but one thing i will mention about this puzzle is that it's got an interesting feature these treffle puzzles basically what you have here is you have six sections of 1500 pieces which in and of itself isn't unusual but each section can also be its own puzzle in its own right because each section has its own border but if you don't want to keep the puzzles like that, you can also remove the internal borders and attach the different sections together and make it the 9,000 piece puzzle. So if you want to, you can have it as six different puzzles or you can put it together and have it as the one big 9,000 piece puzzle. But it has like that each one has its own border, which I've never seen before in other large piece count puzzles. And I think that that is a nice feature especially for people who want to have a go at a large piece count puzzle but they either have maybe space restrictions or you know they they don't they're perhaps a bit intimidated by the the amount of pieces in a large piece count puzzle i think that's a nice wee feature and a nice wee kind of introduction into large piece count puzzles what do they call it unlimited fit technology that's what they call it on here so that is something I'm looking forward to and it works because it's a collage puzzle. It's not a big continuous image so it's not like when you build one section you might have half a character cut off because the image continues on into the next section. It's a collage so there are obvious breaks in between these picture frames where you know it becomes like a puzzle in its own right. So that's going to be really really good. Now I've never done a large piece count treffle. I've only done one treffle before and that was a thousand pieces. Um, but looking at the pieces in these bags, which they've all been bagged up separately, so again thank you Lisa for doing that. Um, but looking at these pieces, they look tiny. They look really small. Um, certainly the smallest pieces I've done in a large piece count puzzle, so that'll be interesting. Might need to put my glasses on for this one. But yeah, I've only really had a brief look at the pieces. It's got the poster and everything and a little leaflet and stuff. So yeah, looking forward to this one. We'll see, we'll see when I get around to doing it. <laughs> So that's it. That's all of the puzzles in today's puzzle haul. And again, lots and lots of puzzle gifts in this one. I have had my birthday a couple of months ago, so I've had gifts from that that I just haven't got around to showing you yet. And early Christmas gifts and things like that and lovely gifts from my really lovely subscribers. So thank you so much. And on the subject of thank yous, I would love to thank you all because I just recently hit a huge milestone on my channel. I just hit 20,000 subscribers and I, I, I'm I, just staggered. I'm sp speechless. I, I don't have any words. I just, I just want to thank you so, so much for all your support, for just watching my videos and enjoying what I'm putting out there and interacting with me and commenting and just all of it. I'm so, so appreciative for all your support. So thank you so much. And thank you also to all of my YouTube members and my patrons. I really appreciate your extra support on the channel. And I hope that you are enjoying the extra content that I'm putting up there. And if anyone else is interested in extra perks and extra 
video puzzle content then please consider having a wee look at my members area and at my Patreon. There are links in the description below so you can go and have a wee look see what I've got to offer there and if you are interested then please do join and I really do appreciate that extra support so thank you. And yes, my last thing I wanted to say was that I will put links in the description as well. There'll be Amazon associate links for as many of these puzzles that I can put links in for. Not all of them will be available on Amazon. And there's no obligation for you to purchase or anything like that if you don't like using Amazon or whatever reason. But if there are puzzles here that you really like the look of and you wouldn't mind giving them a go please consider using those because you don't pay any more than the recommended retail price but I do get a wee commission from those sales that all just go straight back into making the channel better but otherwise I will say to you all happy puzzling thank you so much for watching if you've not subscribed to the channel yet then please do consider subscribing leave a like if you enjoyed the video and please leave a comment I really really love reading your comments and replying to them when I can ask me any questions and I will try and answer them for you which one's your favorite puzzle out of all this lot which one do you really like the look of which one are you looking forward to seeing a video on the most? I really can't wait to hear what your thoughts are on this puzzle haul. So thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.